Good morning everyone. Lovely to be back with you again. Let's collectively bow down in front of Shamataji, raise our Kundalini and put ourselves into Bandhan.
so I just thought I'd point out that um, we all seem to be having a lot of internet problems this morning, so hopefully um, we'll be able to get through the program all right. If not, we'll just put the attention at Sarasrara and finish off our meditation when we're ready. So uh, I thought this morning just to get the year off to a good start for a Wednesday, um, that we'll just clear our left and right channels, um, just do some breathing exercises in a minute, and uh, and then we've got a um, Swadhisthana Chakra talk, which is I think the only one that's in English actually, <laughs> Um, but I like to play it at least once a year. So let's get started with attention on top of the head, both hands on the lap, breathing in nice and slowly, holding the breath and then slowly releasing. Hold the breath again. Breathing in nice and slowly again. Hold the breath and slowly release. Hold the breath again and take the breath deeply inside. Hold again and now slowly exhale. Return your breathing to your normal pace. And just drop the right hand towards Mother Earth as we clear our left side. And we'll say one mantra to Sri Mahakali Bharava Sakshat. Um, Sakshat Sri Mahakali Bharava Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Sri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha. So one mantra to Sri Mahakali, Bhadrakali, Kali Kalki Saksha. Om Tvame Va Saksha Sri Mahakali, Bhadrakali, Kali Kalki Saksha Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Mother, please clear away any negative energy blocking my left channel. Please clear any negative energy blocking my left channel. Put the right 
hand back onto the lap and we can bend the left elbow as we clear the right side I say one mantra to Sri Maha Saraswati Hanumana Saksha. Om Twame Wa Saksha Sri Maha Saraswati Hanumana Saksha Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Sri Nemala Devi Namo Namaha I'll also do one mantra to Sri Kriya Shakti Sakshan. Om Twame Wa Sakshat Sri Kriya Shakti Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Mataji Sri Nemala Devi Namo Namaha Mother, please let all the heat, all the negative energy blocking my right channel be absorbed by the ether. Please clear my right channel. Mother, please clear my right side. Just do some beta mantras for the central channel. Lam, 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 lam. 
Ram 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 Just absorb those um, vibrations for a few minutes.
मिथिला ऑल काइंड ऑफ क्रिएटिव एक्शन टेक प्लेस सी हाउर ऑल वाई हैज लव एंड इन दिस प्लेस यू ऑल ऑल्सो वॉट न्यू आइडियाज ऑफ क्रिएटिंग अ ब्यूटिफुल थिंग एंड एज लव विल इंक्रीज your creativity will develop so the basis of all creativity of saraswati is love if there is no love there is no creativity it's even in the deeper sense if you see people who have created all the scientific things are also out of love for the masses not for themselves nobody has produced anything for themselves If they make something for themselves, it has to be strong for universal use. Otherwise, it has no meaning. Even if you say atom bomb and all these things are created from science, they are also very protective. If they had not created those, people would not have taken out their minds from war. Now nobody can think of having a big war. Of course, they are having cold wars, but that also will gradually stop when they will be fed up. So all the activity. on the right hand side of sarasvati basically has to end up in love starts with love and ends up in love whichever does not end up in love coils up and finishes up it just disappears so you can see that even matter which is not used for love just finishes the basis has to be love otherwise all such matter that we create which has angularity which is not fitting into the mass media which is not appealing to the masses of course it takes time we have seen that it takes time but it does has that tendency always to disappear in the thin air as soon as you find it does not appeal to the masses now this love of that we talk of this great love of god we talk of we know that it for definite through vibration people do not have vibrations but still they can feel the vibrations in a very unconscious way all the great paintings of the world have vibrations all the great creative works of the world have vibrations only those who have vibrations have been sustained by time otherwise all other things are destroyed there must have been monuments and horrible statues and horrible things that have been created long time back but we are all destroyed by nature and we could not stand the impact of the kala that is the destructive power of time so all that is sustaining all that is nurturing all that is ennobling comes from this sense of love which is within us very much developed but within others also who are not yet realized ultimately the whole world has to realize that one has to go to that ultimate love of god otherwise it has no meaning now you have seen in art people have taken to other methods of appealing to people by using cheap things and very vulgar things just to make people think that this is art but this will all disappear it cannot sustain the impact of the time as i told you it can because the time will kill it. all these things have to disappear and already you can see the result how things are changing everywhere even in the west so there is no need to be so much disappointed with the west and to say that the western world is a waste land it is going to be all right and it has to be done especially it has done a lot of puja of saraswati i should say in the west much more that they have done in india because they have gone to learning they have tried to find out so many things but only thing they forgot that it is a goddess goddess of love everything comes from the goddess that's what they forgot and that's why all the problems have been created if there is no spirit in your learning if there is no source of the goddess in your learning then it is absolutely useless if they have realized that there is the spirit that is working it out they would not have gone that far and that's what i was warning the indians all through that you are now taking to industrial revolution in a way and to avoid all the complications of industrial revolution you must try to 
know the spirit. If you do not know the spirit, you will have the same problems as, as these people have, because they are also human beings, you are also human beings. You will go the same way, at random you will run and there will be problems, the same problems as the Western people have suffered. Now, Saraswati's blessings are so many that one cannot describe in such a short time. And the Surya has given us so many powers that it is impossible to tell them even in one lecture, even in ten lectures. But how we go against Surya and how we go against La Saraswati while doing the worship of Saraswati is to be seen very clearly within ourselves. For example, the Western people are very fond of Surya because they have no Surya. But they go too far with it, as you know, and create complications within themselves of Surya. But the main thing that one has to achieve through Surya is the light within, is the light within. And if Surya chakra at the Agha level is occupied by Lord Jesus Christ, then it is even more such that the purity of life, what we call niti, is the morality of life. The morality itself has become very much sort of an argument in the West. <coughs> People don't have any sense of absolute morality. On vibrations, of course, you But they have gone all against it. Those who are the worshippers of Jesus, those who are the worshippers of the Surya, of the Saraswati, have all gone against, against the powers of Surya, just disobeying it. Because you cannot be a Surya if you do not have a proper sense of morality and holiness. The Surya itself brings light. You see everything. So many qualities Surya has got. It rises up everything that is wet, dirty, filthy. It dries up all these places which create parasites. But so many parasites are created in the West. Not only parasites, but there are horrible cuts and horrible things which have come into that, those countries, which is supposed to be full of light. And in, the, in that darkness they exist, darkness about their spirit, darkness about their own knowledge, and darkness about love. These three things have taken over in the places where you are supposed to love light. Light doesn't mean, light doesn't mean what you see with your gross eyes. Light means from within, the light of love. That one should understand. Light of love. And it's so soothing, it's so sweet, it's so beautiful, it's so enamoring, it's so abounding that unless and until you can feel that light within you, that light which is of pure, of purity, pure relationships, pure understanding, if you can develop that kind of a light within yourself, then whole thing will be cleansed. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. This is what happens to you when you are completely cleansed. The purest form of nature is within us. The purest form of nature is within us. Our chakras are made out of that purest form of nature. We are the only people who are spoiling it by our mental thinking. Again the same, Saraswati is We are going again Saraswati itself. Saraswati cleanses all that is impure in nature while with our brain activity we are spoiling all our brain activity goes against pure intelligence. And that's what one has to understand, that this pure intelligence is not to be soiled by our thinking. Our thinking can make us so bumptious, so ego-oriented, so impure, that we can really eat the poison and say, what's wrong? Just the opposite of Saraswati. 
Saraswati ji dina is within us, she gives us Subuddhi wisdom. And that's why to worship Saraswati, to worship Surya, we must have that clear vision as to what we have to be, what we are doing, what faith we are living in, what our mind is getting into. After all, we are here for emancipation and not for just pampering our ego and living with our faith that is with us. So this life has come within us and we should try to rise above our own mental faith which is being created around us. Apart from that, you have to go higher and understand that there is within us a thing called ego. And this ego is false, absolute false. You do not do anything. Actually, when you turn your eyes here and there, when your attention is here and there, it's nothing but your ego is trying to overpower it. But actually ego is an absolute false because there's only one ego and that is of God Almighty, Mahat Ahankara. There is no really any ego that exists. It's a myth. It's a very big myth because if you start thinking, you are doing everything, you are doing this, you are doing that, which you are not doing, then this nonsensical ego comes in and you start working it out. It can project in every direction. When it projects forward, it overpowers others, it tries to dominate others, tries to uh, kill others, becomes cruel. When it moves right, to right side, it becomes supra-conscious. It starts seeing things which are absurd, which are foolish, which are stupid. When it moves left side, <coughs> then it starts uh, talking, uh, I mean seeing things, uh, yourself as a big man, as a big uh, Christ or uh, as a big uh, Devi or something that Adi Gurus and I am very great personality, that's left side. When it moves backwards, that's the dangerous one. When people uh, become gurus which are uh, ruining other people. But when the ego moves backwards, then they become gurus. They themselves have lots of defects in themselves and they try to pull people into those horrible stuff which is described as absolute narka. That's how is the movement of ego on all the sides. Now, when people try to use their right vishuddhi, that is to talk about themselves, is the worst of all. Whatever type of ego you may have, if you start boasting about it and talking about it, then it encircles, thickens the walls of ego so much that it is impossible to penetrate into that because that such a person is completely satisfied with himself and he believes that he is so. And once he starts believing into a nonsense like that, it is an impossibility, it's an impossibility to penetrate. So when you boast, about these things, or you talk with, be careful. You see, you know what I am, but how many times do I say I am done? Even if I say once, it makes tremendous vibrations for you. But how many times do I say so? At the most, if you say something, I say to him, yes, but I don't say that. If, say, if I say it loudly, I don't know what may happen, the whole thing might be blasted with me. So, one has to understand that Mahatahankara is the one that acts, that works, that really. Sometimes I shout at you, immediately all the books run out. Just once I shout, yesterday you saw all the books that were coughing, you all ran. Yesterday just I stopped. So, you should understand that now as you realize souls, you can also do the soul. Use your right Vishuddhi to shout at yourself. Now, will you please stop boasting? Will you stop talking all this nonsense? Will you stop showing off? Then it is. Now this thickening takes place by people who really are active, who want to do something about it. Not that they are not active, they want to do it. But they know only one way is to act talk. They don't understand that there are inner ways by which you control it much more. Because they don't want to take to that, they take to this talking. And once they take to talking and they talk about it, the whole power flows up. But if they do not talk about it and keep it within themselves, it's all right, you can tell me about your experiences or anything, but if you start telling others 
and talking about it too much, then the powers that you have got will be all disappearing gradually and you will just come down to absolutely lowest level. So one should not too much talk that I have this power, I have this power, or I see this or I do this, which is a very wrong thing. I warn you, don't try to show off. Ah, you can talk about my powers also, but don't try to talk about your powers. When it comes, of course, to talk to somebody who is a negative person or to tell somebody, then you should say that we, not I, we have, some of us have felt this power within us. We have seen people, it may be you only, but you need not say, I have. What you have to say, we, then you become the Mahatanga. When you say we, yes, some of us, we do. Like in Gregor's book also, I made it, to, I saw to it that he should not have many eyes, but he should have we. We think, we do, we. Means the whole collective we, the whole collective organism, living organism of Sahaja So if you say, yes, some of us have got, that means you I'll leave that there this morning and just go into a silent meditation.
share strategy. Um, we're going to finish up there today. We'll just say um, the last verse of the three great mentors. Om Twameva Sakshat Shri Kalki Sakshat Shri Sahasra Swamini Moksha Pradaini Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha Jay Shramataji, thank you so much for being with us this morning. It's always lovely to share this time together and um, and your vibrations as well. They're just so beautiful. When you're ready to finish up your meditation, please bow down, raise your kundalini and put yourself into bandhan. Have an absolutely wonderful day ahead, everybody. Jay Shramataji. Bye.